From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up Warchant, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, Force in the Football. Is less more for Florida State football this coming season and a weekend wrap up across the diamond and the hardwood. Wake up board champ presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. CPTallyBar.com is the website. You can always pull out your phone, open up your camera app, and hit that QR code. Take you right to the website. Monday's lunch special runs from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Only $8.99. You get to build your own burger. Half pound black Angus burger includes lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, and your choice of straight fries, curly fries, onion rings, potato salad, broccoli, side salad, tater tots, or freshly cooked potato chips. It's delicious. It's only $8.99 today from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. 2475 Appalachian Parkway. Cannot miss it. Warchant.com, Ultimate Symbol Sports Source. Lots of stories over there. Thumbs up. How about for that? Maybe subscribe. $29.99 for premium access. From this point forward up until September 1st if you jump aboard. So do it. What you waiting for? Five-star rating and review as well. Por favor. Corey, how are you? You're here, right? There you are. I am here, yeah. And I'm in town. I'm in Tallahassee. So it's all all working out. It's all working out, buddy. I'm good. Did you have a good weekend? Did you do anything fun? Just watch Link and the boys take out out the Dukes, Mm. you know? New day. New day at Hauser. Good to see a lot of energy out there. Lots of energy. But that's all you did? You didn't go out? Didn't have any dates or anything? Actually, I did. I went and had a, a drink with a young lady. Uh, and that was it, though. Nothing uh, nothing encouraging. It was uh, a little bit of stilted, kind of forced conversation. It wasn't really organic. It was really weird. I had a match with her, and like no one said anything to each other for like three or four days. And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, hey, how are you? I'm like, good. And then we traded like two or three messages. And she's like, do you want to grab a drink? I'm like, sure. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. Like, she didn't give me her phone number. We literally exchanged, like, five messages each, and then we went and met up for a drink. And it was super crowded at the bar I picked out, which was not a good uh, sort of option. But the conversation wasn't that great, and then I didn't get her number, and then she, uh, whatever, like, unfriended me on the app. So she kicked me Oh, man. All right. Well, hey, at least now you you know quickly. That's pretty cool. Like, you're not, like, wondering, like, it's been two days. Is she going to call? Like, if you get unfriended that quickly... It's like, all right, let's move on. Yeah, keep it moving. That's what yeah, we do here on the learn, podcast. Live and learn, too. yeah. Good. Oh, we'll, we'll get to the bat and ball here in a little bit, Corey. we gotta, we got to force some football, though. Uh, okay. That's what the people want. Great this story. This will be interesting. <laughs> I'm trying, man. Uh, it is February 20th. Uh, our own Gene Are Williams. You not, I was going to say, though, forcing the football, uh, my better half got to meet Mike Norvell on Friday. I saw that. She looked uh, radiant. He looked all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. What was that all about? What was he? How did they cross paths? She was. Uh, he was speaking at the Extra Point Club, which is a. Uh, I think it's a club that was started by Ann Bowden. Um, that's that's. Uh, Ira and I have spoken at it before. Um, hmm. uh, did a preseason. We've done it twice. We did one. We had to do one on Zoom, but the first time we did it was uh, Willie's last year. We were asked to speak at one of the preseason uh, lunches they had. It was really cool. It's a. Uh, it's all women. I. I'm almost positive it's all women. Like, it's just four women yeah. that are football fans and Florida State fans, and they get together, and they, I think they get together once a month and have uh, something like this. And anyway, Norvell was the, uh, was the speaker, and Stephanie was there. She's the uh, newest member, and I think the youngest member, um, <laughs> but she's definitely the newest member, and she was there on Friday, and, uh, yeah, she got to meet him and uh, had a really good time. And she said, I'm Corey Clark's girlfriend, thinking that he would, like, recoil. And she's like, babe, he's like a fan of yours. Yeah. And I'm like, well, of course he is. I'm you the best. His, you <laughs> saved his job, man. You <laughs> kicked him in the pants. You're like, come on. I got man. him going. I got him to try and start winning games or care about winning games. Yeah. So uh, he said he was very he was very kind talking about me, and uh, he was very kind to her. So that yeah, it was a good time for her. Yes, yeah, she would. You could tell she was glowing getting to meet her uh, crush. Analytic breakdown over at Wordchant.com. Exclusive content for our subscribers, uh, written out by our own Gene Williams, founder, administrator of Wordchant.com. A deep statistical dive into Florida State's wide receivers. Lots of good numbers, lots of good information in there. Nuggets 
uh, not just anecdotal stuff, but real numbers, Corey. And uh, one of the numbers that kind of stood out to me was the passing yards per game. From 2021, it went from 94th in the country to 28th, nearly an improvement of 70 yards. Um, and it got me kind of thinking, I was listening to one of the, like the Rosillo podcast, I think, and they were talking about Sean Payton taking the job in Denver and how things are going to work with him and Russell Wilson. And we come up with all these comps for Jordan. Uh, and one of the first ones, and we were almost joking about it, was like Russell Wilson because like the Yazur. Because uh, I think Russell's got something like that in his toolbox when he's talking to the media. And also it's like, you know, go Hawks, ride, let's ride, or whatever for the Broncos. But, you know, they were talking about just how much kind of the – I don't know, like the new car smell came off Russell Wilson so quickly this past season in Denver because he was not successful. Uh, and this whole, like, let Russ cook thing, right? Like, when he was at his best, Russell Wilson, was in Seattle when they didn't ask him to do all that much naturally. Like, he would still kind of improvise and create things. Uh, but they relied on their run game. They didn't maybe have the most developed, talented wide receiver core but that run game gave them so much flexibility and opened up so many things for them to be able to pass the ball. Just kind of thinking, when it comes to Jordan, how much of his, his success has been predicated on the fact that this team can run the ball so effectively, so well, with seemingly any guy they put there in the backfield with him? And does that still need to be the calling card for this offense this coming season? Or do we need to let Jordan cook? Does he need to you know, go from 28th in the country in passing yards per game? Does that need to be top 15 for Florida State to get the next rung on the climb, do you think? Or will it be, you know, stay committed to who you are and just marginal improvement? Um, yeah, no, I, I think that you stay what – I mean, look, man, you had at the end of the year one of the best offenses in the country. I, I would say just stick with that. Um, if you're trying to chase a Heisman, maybe you have him throw 10% more, 5% more than he did, but – the, the beauty of the Florida State offense is normally when you think about like a run-first offense, you're like kind of thinking of a plotting nine-play, 66-yard drive. I mean, they, they score a lot on their run, with their running plays. I mean, they have big plays. They, they create and block it up to the point where they get massive plays in the run game, 50, 60-yard plays. Um, they can, go, they can do, be as quick strike handing the ball off or Jordan even keeping it as they can throwing it, uh, you know, post patterns and, and uh, deep down the sideline. Like, I, I I think you do exactly what you've been doing. I don't think he needs to, um, you know, as you said, cook. Uh, I, I also think the beauty of it, though, is when the run game isn't working well, you know you got that. But I, I think, because look, man, I don't think the way the the last two games of the season went, particularly the last game of the season, was what Mike Norvell was looking for. Like where he, Trey Benson, what do you have? Nineteen yards. He only needed twenty five for get to get to a thousand, and he usually can get that on one or two runs. And he had twenty in the whole game. They couldn't run the ball real well against Oklahoma, not traditionally anyway. They threw it for four hundred yards, but I don't think that's what Mike Norvell wants to do. I think he really does want a lot of balance, and he does want to feed those running backs and play off that great running game. So I don't, I, I don't foresee them changing much at all I, I think they're gonna you know Jordan, Jordan Travis around 30 throws a game to me is exactly I don't what did he average you got that on hand is that one of the analytics uh you, you saw Aslan how many how many passes did he average per game uh that is not in the chart it's not in the chart sorry sorry oh, well that's too chart. bad we could probably look that up I bet just uh, you you tell me the number and I'll divide it by 13 and it'd be pretty quick but I would guess it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 Maybe you tick that up to 30. 353. So 353 divided by 30 is, well, 390 13. would be 30. So 27. Are, yeah, it'd be 28, 27. Okay, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because 390 attempts would have been 30 a game, and it's less than that. So, I yeah, man, I, I think maybe get them to 30 passing attempts a game, but I don't. they don't want to be that, right? They're not going to be the, the spread you out, throw it 10 times a game, you know, Offense. There's a lot of RPOs, though, too, man. Mm. So I think the defense a lot of times dictates how many times they throw the ball. And if you're going to let them run the ball or if you're going to give them a look where Jordan thinks I can run to the left right here, he 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 is not the guy, thankfully, that's going to pull it out just so he can throw another pass. He's going to seemingly do what's best for the offense on every play. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, do you want to just pick up where you left off? Or, like, is there a, a belief within, like, the fan base that they need to still, like, take another step when it comes to the way they play offense? Because, uh, you know, 
we put so much onus on them going into the season that they were the ones that can have to really step up. The defense seemingly played pretty well second half of 2021 that you thought if they could maintain that, you'd be all right. But the offense, it was their turn. I mean, you got so much invested on that side of the ball because it's your head coach and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just, you know, I think there's this belief that maybe he's just going to hit this sort of next level, which would be awesome, which I'm here for it. Uh, but I just, just wonder if we just kind of hang but out next what we level, were doing. Do you, do you mean next level just in production? I would think so. I mean, I, I think people want to see like, like a 2013 hit. level offense, just absolute well, efficiency, surgical, yeah. uh, just domination, overwhelming everybody. I think that might be a little tough to reach that, but it's close, man. I mean, that offense the last half of the season was pretty darn close to uh, uh, one of the best offenses in Florida State history because uh, they were scoring. That first team offense was scoring like 60% of the drive, 65% of the drive, something like that, just a crazy number. So uh, I, I, they, they're pretty close, and I think, man, I, I just think – I don't know that he can go another level because I think at the end, by the end of the year – he was hitting his head on his uh, uh, almost as well as college quarterbacks can play. Yeah. Again, I, I go to those last two games, that Florida game, I know the stats were 13 out of 30, but he had five or six horrible drops, and then he had the crazy runs. Um, and then the Oklahoma game, he threw for 400. So, I, man, that's I don't know that you can go much up. If you maintain, make a couple of improvements here or there, but just maintain, and your offensive line could be better. Your running backs could be better. Your wide receiver core should be better. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's exciting times in T. Hasse. I mean, he had five games where he had more than seventy one percent, more than seventy uh, percent completion percentage. Yeah, that's really. I mean, gosh, Syracuse he was ninety one percent, twenty one yeah. to twenty three, for one fifty five. Though, let's get come on, step it up. Well, that's better. right, that's right. Hey, you, you know what you do? You take what the defense gives you, Jordan. Tom Brady made a career out of that. Just keep it up. Spring football around the corner. We'll be out at uh, tour of duty here soon as well, so uh, we are great looking forward to it. And then we won't have to force the football as much, everybody. You crammed that in there. That was good, Aslan. Well done. Avoid a case of the Mondays or the Tuesdays or the Wednesdays when you take a shot of vitamin energy. Packed with natural caffeine and a slew of vitamins, vitamin energy is here to make you more productive and healthier. Is it the official pre-workout drink of Corey Clark and myself? Basically, right, Corey? Oh, are you asking? I, I, I can't speak for you, but it absolutely is for me, 100%. Uh-huh. Once we all finally get a photo of Corey's six-pack abs, we'll have Vitamin Energy to thank. Uh, and the FSU alums over at Vitamin Energy are hooking you up with a buy one, get one free promotion. Just use the promo code WARCHANTBOGO, WARCHANT, B-O-G-O, over at vitaminenergy.com. You will receive an item of equal or lesser value for absolutely free. No catch, no crash, natural caffeine and nutrients to get you going for seven hours. Vitaminenergy.com, shake it and take it. Wednesday, the big delivery day, Corey. I, I scheduled a, a delivery. They call me the freight company. They're coming on Wednesday. They're like, yeah, we're just going to drop it right out front of your house. I'm like, all right, great. So I might need to have some security here so nobody runs up on me and, and steals my stash. As but, you're t- yeah, it's not going to be one trip to get it into the cool. house, is it? Man, that's gonna be, it's going to be like a world's strongest man competition, like the Atlas Stones. Nice. They're running back and forth. So it'll be my workout, but I'll be good. I'll be energized because I'll have vitamin energy. Use the promo code WordChamp, B-O-G-O. Shake it, take it, vitaminenergy.com. On the diamond, hey, let's let's keep forcing the football, Corey. Mike Norvell threw the first pitch Friday. I I didn't see it. I'm assuming probably like chest high strike heat. It was. It, and from the top of the mound, too. Oh, yeah, it was man. uh it was it was well man. done. He did a he did a real good job there. It was uh it was uh, uh yeah, man, it was a strike. He threw it with some pace. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say high sixties, low seventies. But I mean, he 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 wasn't throwing full speed, but he threw it hard enough that you, you know, pop the mitt. So yeah, it was impressive. All right. I mean, he was still fired up for having met my girlfriend. I think yeah. he's still riding high. <laughs> nice. Florida State hosted James Madison, who they opened the season against with last year, uh, and repeated defeat. Right? They uh, they went ahead and swept the Dukes uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, with a really nice crowd every single day out there at Dick Hauser yeah. Stadium, which is. Uh, undergone a little bit of a, I don't want to call it a facelift, but maybe a facelift, right? Because it hasn't, uh, it hasn't shook down to the core or anything like that. But looked really nice. Hopefully everybody enjoyed all the new kind of signage and tributes to uh, Florida State legends of past. 12-7 to the final on Friday, 5-1 Saturday, 17-10 to on Sunday. A little bit, oh, can we call that misleading, Corey? Because they, they did allow seven in the ninth. But, yes. you know, it happened. But it, I guess, you know, how much we'll complain about it or not but on the whole i mean i'm sure you probably have a column coming up over on wordchant.com 
this is not a criticism at all. I didn't. I, I was fine with meat. Uh, it's going to take more than one series to change this team and their 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 makeup. But obviously, there's so many new guys on this team, Corey. I kind of want to just start with. They still did a lot of the same sort of stuff that Florida State's been doing for the last, I don't know, nine, ten years. Uh, some base running blunders, uh, maybe not picking the ball all that clean. Uh, again, I'm not discouraged by it, but just anyone that thought maybe Link Jarrett was going to bring some sort of magic wand with him down from South Bend and make this team look totally different overnight, not so. Uh, but plenty of room to grow, and they, you know, they knocked the freaking cover off the ball on Sunday, which was good to see them do. So I don't know, what were kind of your, your bigger takeaways, at least in terms of the way they looked and performed uh, in that three-game sweep? Uh, yeah, man, I, th I thought they looked uh, good overall. It's hard to know, though, because uh, as I brought up as we were walking out of the stadium, they, they swept the same team last year, um, and that did not pretend to great things. Uh, it was just a sweep of a you know kind of mediocre baseball team. That's kind of what this was. Um, I, I do think that you know they played a lot of freshmen. The Cam Smith kid, is that, that's some real stuff there. He looked uh, really smooth in the field. Uh, he, if you guys haven't seen him, he's a – I don't know, man, 6'3", 215, 220. He is just, he he is a put-together young man that looks like one of those top five picks in the draft, the guy that's going to be in the major leagues for 10 or 12 or 20 years, who knows. He's just a big kid, but can really move. Um, and he hit his he hit his first home run on, on Sunday. He had another that was off the top of the fence on Friday. Um, he, he, when he hits the ball, it's a different, it, it, it go it, it, even when he doesn't hit it well. Like I, there was a play on Sunday, a, a, a bat on Sunday, where I don't even think he hit it that well. He kind of got under it, out on his front foot, and the kid made a leaping catch at the fence. Mm. Uh, that that's the kind of raw power this kid has. They haven't had a lot of guys like him that have rolled through this program here recently. Um, I thought the 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 concern I have uh, more than anything, it, it's not the base running. That was just some goofy stuff, man. I, I do think he will eventually coach that out of him. Uh, and like and I even asked him on Sunday about some of the uh, the mistakes that were made. Were they really even mistakes? And he explained, obviously, the bunt was. That was crazy. Uh, Kate Bush was at second base. I think it was Trayton Rank. is trying to sack bunt him to third, sack both runners up. The ball is popped up on the bunt, and it's in foul territory, and my man still takes off for third. Um, and so the catcher catches it and throws – back to second for a double play that that's the stuff we don't want to see anymore uh we we just don't want to see that anymore and i promise i've been at practice they don't practice hey man as soon as he shows bunt just take off just assume he's going to get on there don't even look like and if it's popped up catcher will probably drop it take off like that's not how they teach it so that's just a, a learning a teaching moment uh for him and uh jaime ferrer had a uh, i thought a pretty bad base running goof uh in the first inning hit a double down the line left field line and then tried to stretch it in a, a triple for no real reason with two outs. All you're trying to do is get the guy home. He tries to stretch it in a triple. He's thrown out. Luckily, Tibbs was running the whole time and touched home before he got tagged out at third for the final out. But that's the kind of stuff that's been hampering this program. Saw a little bit too much of it, but it's also the first week of the season. The problem with last year's team is it was the culmination of nine straight years of seeing that nonsense. Link does get a clean slate, and some of it is going to carry over a little bit. But I thought on the whole, I thought they did play pretty cleanly. I thought Saturday their errors were made by backups. Or sorry, Sunday their errors were made by backups. Um, the other Sunday, you know, Colton Vincent dropped a pop-up on Friday night. But, uh, you know, other than that, Carrion had a, a bad throw. I thought the fielding was good. I thought the, 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 the infield defense, to me, was really impressive. Cam Smith in particular. And I want to bring up real quick, Aslan. This is way too much about baseball anyway. I brought it up to what Link Jarrett. What else are we going to the... talk about, Corey? We're only like 20 Hey, man, we got show, basketball, man. baby. We go back to the Extra Point Club, talk about Stephanie Norvell. We, uh, but we got uh, James Tibbs, uh, Atlanta area kid, so yes. you know I already like him. So he, on, he went 0 for 4 on Friday, and he's the number three hitter on this team. He's one of the best hitters in the ACC, prob should be. Um, he, goes, oh, he goes 0 for 4 on Friday night. He goes 0 for 4 on Saturday, including two rocket shots that get caught at the fence that both probably would have been home runs if they were hit on another day, but they're both caught. So they're 0 for 8. Uh, you can tell as he gets to second base after the kid catches the second one jumping into the fence. Uh, he's, you know, he's, kind of, he, he's like, what, really? Like, come on, man. So it's always, you know, I, he knows he's a good hitter. He knows he's not going to go hitless, but it's baseball. You want hits. And when you're 0 for 8 after two games, you can start to press. You can start to get... Um, 
you know, caught up in woe is me and man, I can't catch a break and feel upset about it. But I've noticed it at the end of the game on Saturday. He plays first now. He may he actually looked pretty good at first for a first series. He made a couple interesting decisions or had one tick off his glove. But other than that, I thought he was good. But so the game ends. I can't remember how it ends. It's a strikeout or a pop up or something. Cam Smith and James Tibbs on the final out run towards each other and do like a jumping into their back behind the mound. Like you'll see outfielders do sometimes, or a yeah. basketball player after they, you know, just excited, celebrating. And I'm like, okay, well, that's cool to see. He's not that upset about being 0 for 8. But it wasn't just that, because they had coordinated that, I'm sure, a week ago or two two weeks ago. He, he As the other players are coming out of the dugout, he's going, let's go, and he's throwing, he's like really fired up and pumping his fists. And I'm just, I remember just thinking to myself, that doesn't, and maybe it's because I'm around Brady Clark too much and all those selfish 14 year old boys that don't, don't carry their way if their team wins or lose. They just want hits. But like, I was like, man, that's good to see, right? That kid is 0 for 8. He just got robbed of a double. He, he's, and it's such an individualized sport. But in that moment, he is really, really happy and fired up that his team won a game in February over James Madison. That's, that's cool, right? Absolutely. That's a that's a good sign. And I, I remember even saying it, man, like to myself and to his mom, who I met after the game. Um, I was like, man, that's a good sign. That that kind of karma comes back. If you have that kind of karma where you care more about the team than you do yourself, or you at least care as much and you are happy with a team win, even if you didn't get a hit, I just think baseball has a way of paying, sports, life has a way of paying that kind of mindset off. And then my man on Sunday, to make a long story even longer, went four for four with a home run and a triple and three RBIs. Didn't get so, the cycle, though. Didn't get the cycle, though. He didn't get the cycle. He was a double short of the cycle. But I just think that stuff matters, man. I just think it matters. And I told Link about it after the game. I'm like, you probably didn't see Tibbs. But I, I was like, he he was really excited after that after that win. He, and, he's, and he's like, oh, hmm. And I, was, I almost wanted to be like, you should show the whole team video of that. Like, to point out, oh, and what did Tibbs do the next day? He went four for four with a bomb and a triple. Like, it, it just be good to the sport, and the sport will be good back to you. Care about the team more than you care about yourself, and good things happen to yourself. That was my lesson. That was my message. And I mentioned that in the column that is already up on uh, War Champ. But you should go read it anyway. It's not just about Tibbs. All right, so Omaha then? No. No, I don't like uh, – I'm not – in love with what's going on in the on the pitching mound. Um, I, Wyatt Crowell, again, came in on Friday, looked great because he will. Connor Whitaker, I think, is a, a good pitcher. I don't know what else they have for sure. Yeah. And they didn't have one starter get to the fifth inning, or at least out of the fifth inning. Uh, Jamie Arnold pitched on Sunday and, and didn't get out of the third. Um, now, I know that Link kind of doesn't mind that. He likes, he's got, a, he's got guys in the bullpen he wants to use, but I would like to figure out a way again it's first weekend but by the middle of march you need to be getting you need to have some guys that can go say and maybe it is montgomery and bo meister maybe they were short because they were you know it's the first weekend of the season and you're playing james madison i get it but no nobody on this staff other than crowell and whitaker have built up enough goodwill that you just assume oh yeah bo, bo meister and montgomery they'll be able to go six innings when it counts when acc play starts so i, I would just like to see that more than anything but I uh, you know they don't they didn't strike out a ton they also didn't strike out a ton like their pitchers didn't strike out a ton you know what I mean either oh, okay. way it was yeah, like yeah, a completely yeah. different game uh than what we were used to last year but that's why I liked that the uh for the most part other than the 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 backups that were used and when they were up 17 to 3 they fielded the ball pretty well because they're gonna have to maybe they're not gonna be a team that strikes out 14 guys a game they put the ball in play they keep games moving it's good to see how about all the bunting I was cool with it, but I thought people don't like bunting anymore. The only bunt that I really had a problem with was uh, Diamez Ross on Sunday uh, bunted a 3-1 pitch for a base hit. And I'm like, what? what that was him, it? too, right? He freelanced that. It's, it sounds like, I think, in the postgame. Oh, I think Link, oh really? Link was saying, like, yeah, he went and did, did that himself. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I didn't think that was called, but I, I w it is, I'm okay with bunting, especially he can run, and he can run. Uh, put pressure on the defense. That's fine. I don't like that. Like maybe bunting has been so emphasized that my man thinks on a three-one pitch with a runner at first he should be bunting. I, I, that's no. You, you could walk. The next pitch might be ball four. That's as good as a bunt. If you're gonna, if you're going to put a ball in play on a three-one pitch, hit it off the wall. 
That's what you do with 3-1 pitches. You don't bunt them. Uh, that me, Corey Clark, that's just my personal opinion. But no, I don't I don't mind it. I like that you're putting pressure on the defense. You can tell they're still not great at it. Nander had a good one in the first game. But other than that, not 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 great with it and he said as much and he wants it to be a weapon and I think it can be a weapon in the college game and more than anything man I just hope we've gotten away from and it wasn't just meets teams it was all these teams just 15 strikeouts but hopefully you hit a couple home runs Mm -hmm. like put the ball in play and good things happen take a different approach with two strikes and good things happen and for the most part I thought they did a really good job of that hitting behind runners advancing runners getting guys home from third with less than two outs, putting the ball in play. It was good to see. The crowd. Good Mm. weather. A lot of James Madison alums. uh, People curious just to see what Link's all about. I mean, it's it wasn't, you know, a magical night like in 1999 or anything or 2002. uh, But it it looked it felt considerably different than it had in, in years past. And what do you credit that to, Corey? Yeah, I think it's that, man. I think it's just fresh blood, new blood. So we like to say, well, hey, we'll get to them in a second. Um, but I, I just think by the end of last year, you could tell with the crowds, it just there was no excitement. It, it was apathy um, and just like a malaise around the program. And this kind of weekend, like, really did kind of remind me, like, oh, yeah, Florida State can have good baseball fans or has good baseball fans. It can have good crowds because I hadn't seen that the last few years, frankly. And I think that, um, you know, I looked it up. I think they, for the weekend, they probably had, what, fifteen or 16,000? Yeah, they rolled through there. Yeah. It was like 5,000 5, a game. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked it up. Notre Dame in their season opener last year at home had 300. And that was against Clemson, by the way. Their season opening weekend series, because other ones had been postponed because of weather. They didn't even play a home game for the first two or three weeks. My man coached against Clemson in front of 300 people. <laughs> And here he is at Hauser, where he grew up, coaching in front of over 5,000 people against James Madison. So people that were wondering why would Link leave a place like Notre Dame for Florida State, doesn't that say it all, man? 300 people on a Friday night against Clemson. A team that, by the way, that went to Omaha. Wasn't like he was coaching a bunch of slappies. And then he comes and takes over a team that wasn't very good last year. And in their season opener, he, he has over 15,000 roll through the gates. That's the the amount of excitement that's around this pro around this team, sure, and about his hire. But I also think it just has you know it's good good fans. It's a good fan base. They care. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that was it was surprising almost. Like even I got there. Um, I think I got there a little late Friday or no, I got there late Saturday. But yeah, because I came over from the basketball game, and I figured yeah, Friday night will be a nice crowd. Five o'clock. It's a Friday night. People getting off work. They'll show up. Saturday was packed. For a two o'clock game against James Madison, and it wasn't great, great weather. I mean, it was it was sunny, but it was it was kind of cold. Was it seventy five degrees? I wasn't yeah, a fan. Was, yeah, that was real. That was really cool, man. That was cool to see. I, I imagine what it could be like if this team becomes a likable team and uh, starts, you know, winning games against good teams, and they'll get they'll certainly get a test this weekend for sure. Supers are bust, man. I mean, he was in Notre Dame for two full seasons, COVID and knocked out twenty twenty, but he. Made it to Starkville Super Regional 21. They lost to the eventual national champions. And then last year, made it to Omaha. So uh, just do a Super again. Link, that's all I want. Total success. Sure. Total success. I do like the, some of the young guys are good, man. He, You know, that might be a lot asking for him to do that this year. But uh, I like what he, they brought in. There's some real talent there. And, um, you know, you just you wonder. Like he said, he said before the, before the season started, he was worried about the pitching depth. And uh, I am, too. MyBookie.ag, bet anything, anytime, anywhere, and then use the promo code WARCHANT for an instant cash deposit bonus that you can cash in on by simply betting one single time with your deposit amount, and then you can cash right on out. They've got futures out there for the NFL, Super Bowl for next season. Uh, We're still trying to get some NCAAs up in there too, but uh, March Madness will be around the corner. We'll have some picks for that. Uh, NBA outright. Will they make the playoffs? The Hawks right now, Corey. Yes, minus 242. No, plus 192. Your Ooh. boys. I can't believe they're yeah. doubting them. I need to see where the Lakers are at on this. Uh, the Lakers, no, minus 211. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. The, the money's on them uh, not making it. No, the money is uh, on them making it, right? No, it's they're minus two. Oh, actually, you're right. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, come on, Terrible Alan. Get it this. right. Come on, man. You know who's got it right, though, is mybookie.ag. Mm. Check it on out. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere. Use that promo code WARCHANT. Again, you'll get a cash deposit bonus that you can instantly use on any bet, whether it's NBA, Futures, you can go in their live casino, uh, all that sort of stuff is available at the palm of your hand, mybookie.ag. Again, promo code is WARCHANT. All right, Corey, let it rip, man. You patiently waited for 30 minutes to uh, mm. talk about basketball. Knowles played Boston College Saturday. They did, yeah. Valiant effort at times. I think they closed it to like four points. Uh, I don't know, three sure. minutes left, four minutes left maybe yeah. or something. Couldn't finish the drill, though. Couldn't finish the drill. No Matt Cleveland. Uh, a little too much for the rest of the guys to to bear the brunt. Lost number 20 on the year. You were there to take in the entire game and the post game. I'll, I'll leave it up. And I'll, let it, I'll let it breathe, and you can go from there, Corey. What would you think? I mean, there's not. It was weird when we talked to Leonard afterwards. I don't have anything to ask him. What do you ask him? It was it was the fight for eleventh place in the ACC between a mediocre, well, a bad Boston College team and an awful Florida State team that didn't have their best player. So it went the way you you know we kind of thought it would go. There was, it wasn't like you could be like, why didn't Jalen Worley score more or why did it's like there's nothing to ask anymore. So you're just letting the string run out, you know and. uh so that's that was kind of my overall sentiment from that game and from that press conference. It's just like, yeah, man, the, the, just get the season over with. There, there's there. It's not like there's no decisions you could be like, why'd you do that, and not this, or why? I mean, you could sure. Like I, he was asked about, you know, Boba Miller got two fouls because of course he did. He got two fouls within the first two minutes of the game. Uh, he's starting in place of Matt Cleveland, and he gets. Of course, he picks up two fouls in 95 seconds and then sits for the rest of the half. And so Leonard was asked about that, and Leonard's like, well, you don't want him to be on there and get three fouls, and we, you know, we got it down to 11. We were only down 11 and a half. It's like, well, all right, Leonard, but you also got down 19 before that. Like, it wasn't, wasn't like you really withstood it well. But also, who cares? Who cares? It's a meaningless game in February. All these games are meaningless. The only meaning at all is that was their 20th loss. They're the third team in school history to lose at least 20 games. The all-time record is 21. What was the last tie. time? You remember the last, uh, the last that twenty one was two thousand one. It was Steve Robinson, so it was two thousand one or two thousand two. Um, uh, was Steve Robinson team? That's the only time they've lost more. They've lost, that team lost twenty one times, and then there was a team back in the fifties or I think late fifties that went five and twenty. Um, that's it. So you've already you're going to make history. You're going to tie the record next Saturday when you lose at Miami, probably by fifty, and then you're going to break it when you host North Carolina. Uh, that Wednesday, North Carolina is reeling too now. So maybe you pull off an upset win there, but then you got to go play at Virginia Tech. So you'll break the record there. And if you don't break the record there, you'll break it in the ACC tournament. Or somehow maybe you win the ACC tournament and you break it in the NCAA tournament. Or you win the rest of your games and uh, become the most uh, unlikely national champion in college sports history. The 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 thing they're they're the worst team in school history by record, by stats, by really everything you would use to judge a team. Uh, they're they're the worst team in school history, and that was just put on display again on Saturday. Yeah, they played well, as Leonard said. They played well for the final 26 minutes, but the first 14 minutes they got down by 19 to Boston College on the at home. So pretty inexcusable. What are you going to do? Congrats to Caleb Mills. He set a uh, Civic Center record for most free throws made by a Florida State player. I mean, it's just like the Rams of 2022. Like you just you, you came off the Super Bowls. So you're like, I mean, we didn't win a national championship, but like we we had seen fairly consistent high level success here, and this is just so outside the norm. That's your point. Like, what can you ask? You know, who cares at this point? You're you're just so downtrodden by it all. And they're like, all right, you know, wake me up next year. They'll have it figured out. Or is there serious concerns, uh, real high end curiosity about how they're going to figure this thing out? Well, oh, absolutely. There's absolutely curiosity about it. Like you, you number one, the portal's there that helps. But uh, they went you know, to it though. I mean, they went and got Darren Grant. They went and got Jalen no. I mean, Gideon. they've got a. I mean, look, man. I, I when you, you look sell at that out, roster, right? you got to sell out in this thing. Correct. And you've got to jettison. Okay. You've got to jettison some people on that roster. You might have to be a bad. You know, you might not have to be the nicest person in the world and say, "Hey, we, you don't, we don't know that you belong here." Um, those types of things. Uh, I don't. Man, we messed up. It's us. Yeah, it's, it's us, I not should, you. Yeah, yeah. It's not you. It's us for thinking you could play. <laughs> it's our fault. Really? You know, say so, say something like that. Uh, you know, make the kid feel better. But, yeah, so, I, you know, that's that's 
that's a real concern because I had a buddy last night, or sorry, on Saturday night was talking about it, and he's fed up, he, and he's a big Leonard fan. He has season tickets. He loves Leonard. He's like, what's what are the odds that Leonard Hamilton is going to bring this program back to anything worthy of what he had built? And I'm like, well, probably pretty slim because of the age and and you know the seat getting is going to be plenty warm next year. And he's like, well, if you're, you don't give him another year just to give him another year, just so he doesn't go out like this, that doesn't help the program. Like that doesn't help you get to where you want to go, which is a Sweet 16 team. That doesn't get you any closer to that. You're just trying to you're just trying not to be awful. Um, and, but I, I I don't disagree. I don't agree with that. I I think you do give him a year. Uh, but it can't look like this again. It just it just can't. Um, if it does, you know, you this is it. So you hope they go and make some real real noise in the portal, not with, you know, and maybe Jalen Ganey would have been a big big help, man. Cam Fletcher certainly would have been, you know. But they they they're not, you know, they're not playing. So maybe you have better luck. But either way, man, I don't know. I. I I'm I'm just so despondent about the product right now. It's hard to it's hard to get excited about them going to the portal because that's always a crapshoot, um, and it feels like it's a quick fix. But what is it really fixing? Yeah. And can you really fix what is in this program right now with a seventy soon to be seventy five year head coach trying to do a, a perform a rebuild? And but your- I think he deserves a chance. But this is awful. This is awful, and there's no excuse for any of it. And they're gonna they're gonna set the all time record for losses in a season, well, which that, is sad. And that's your point that there's no culture setters either. So I mean, if right. you go and get all these, you know, vagabond motley crew of transfer guys, you know, how quickly can they all acclimate and get on the same page? And I mean, listen, he's gone to the transfer portal. I mean, Caleb Mills is a transfer. Uh, shout yeah. out, got a career high or a season high rather uh, this past Saturday, but like. What I'm just concerned about is, like, I don't know if he just lost a touch, but, you know, so much was made about Malik Osborne being hurt last year and Anthony Polite being hurt last year. And you mentioned, I think, last week just about that those are those are really good complementary pieces, like really good complementary pieces on a team that will make a run in, a, in an NCAA tournament. I don't know if they are your tone-setting leaders, you know, and, like, the, the, that he went into last season thinking that that was going to be enough. And I don't think it would have been enough. And they, we, we will never know because they didn't get to play it all out. And then you go and get a kid from the Ivy League and a kid from an AAC program that's, you know, he's a sniper, but you need a lot more than just that one guy. Just even those choices makes you feel a little bit dubious about what he possibly, I don't know, not, not only what, what his options will be, but what kind of track he'll go down to try to fix it. So, yeah, but because to your the, point, the whole... though, he does deserve it. I'm not saying get rid of yeah. Leonard Hamlet, but he does deserve it. Um, but I wonder if we would say that if we were Kansas or like Kentucky, you know, like does he, you know, is well, of our, our... no, probably not. I think I, I would think if Calipari was coming off a season like they just had and then was eight and 20, uh, they might be saying, OK, it's time. We've we got to move on. Uh, yeah. The, but Florida State isn't Kentucky in, in basketball. I, that needs to be understood. I, I think what he's done needs to be understood. Um, and he needs to, you know, get you get you one. Get you one more year to get it right, man. I don't think it's in, per- in perpetuity. He gets to he gets to coach this this program. Um, so we'll we'll see what it, we'll see what happens. But that's my biggest concern too, man. Is you can bring in players, but what we've always loved about this program since it got good was the culture, was how they 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 cheered for each other all the time. They all played hard. They all played twenty minutes really, even if they're in the game for nine minutes. They played really really hard. Uh, this team doesn't do that, and it doesn't guard, and it's okay getting blown out. It, it's perfectly fine with it. It loves it. That's its briar patch, um, getting blown out. And I just think, that does that has that permeated this? Like, how do you go into the portal and fix that? You can fix it with talent. You can bring in talent, so that gets you to you know, maybe a winning record, but can you become a special team again with just going in the portal and getting four dudes that don't know each other to join other guys that don't really know each other or have never played well together. So would it that's, be would it be fair concern. to would it be fair to ask him that after the last game of the season? Or is that a question that we just talk about in a group chat and on a podcast? Yeah, I mean I I, I think it could be like when you you know you're I mean, probably not that going way, to not, the portal. not being aggressive. No, I wouldn't about ask it, it like yeah, that. Yeah, I'd yeah, say yeah. one of the concerns about the portal is fits and fitting in. And how do you get how do you establish a culture where so many of the guys are new. And so, I, yeah, I think that's fair to ask. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what they get. 
On the bright side, Brooke and the ladies uh, racking mm. up dubs. Senior day victory for uh, Brooke and the women's basketball program. Big night out of Tania Latson per usual. It was an 80 to 66 win uh, over at the Tucker Center. Tania Latson had 31 points, six boards, and three steals. Stat stuffer. Mm. Uh, so they're keeping on, keeping on. Um, I wonder where they'll be seated in the tournament. I think they're ranked 24th right now. So <clears throat> I think the guy that does it, I can't remember his name. I think it might be Charlie Cream. They're they're Lenardi. Um, Charlie Buckets or Brackets or whatever we want to call him. Yeah. I think he had him as a five seed. All right. So that's not bad. I'll play. Let's just not be that 512, right? Let's not be that 512. You want to be the 413? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Knock us up Get up to a four. Yeah. But yeah, that was a good win for him. And then, meanwhile, Lonnie and the softball team down in Clearwater playing at that elite tournament. Uh, they fall to Alabama in the final game of their set out there. Uh, but they did have a great weekend on the whole. Well, they beat Louisiana. I think that's ranked top ten. Uh, they defeated uh, – who else am I looking for here? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've been coughing terribly here, Corey. They defeated uh, Arizona? Yes, that's what I was looking for. In, anyway. in Arkansas? Did they beat Arkansas yes, too? Yes, yes. Crushed yeah. it. Uh, and they only Yeah, I mean, that's crazy, man. They and those are yeah. Two. They lost to. I mean, they're all. They all five were ranked teams. They went three and two. Uh, they lost on Sunday. They beat uh, Louisiana and then lost on Sunday to Alabama two to one in a really good game. Um, all three runs were scored on solo home runs. Just Alabama hit two and and Florida State hit one. I will say this though, Aslan, uh-huh. it's early. We're in February. Mm-hmm. I think I might be. Uh, uh, Sander Cox starting to worry me a little bit, man. So Uh-oh. they Uh-oh. had a lead. In, on Saturday against UCLA, she gave up like four runs in a in an inning and a third, mm. and then against Alabama, she only gave up two runs. That's a fine. That's a good enough outing. It's not a you know it's not maybe the outings we're used to from her, but it was two runs. But she gave up back to back home runs or two home runs in the same inning. I don't think she struck anyone out, um, which you know she's not necessarily a, a huge strikeout pitcher. But that that might concern me a little that she's not getting missing any bats at all. But you know she also had a perfect game through three. So going into the fourth inning, she had a perfect game, and then she gave up two home runs, and they lost two to one. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just little. Th- that was a little odd seeing her. Uh, they they came back. They had a two nothing lead. UCLA. It, they took a two nothing lead, and then they brought her in, in the sixth inning, and she gave up. Uh, I think four runs that inning. And uh, yeah, yeah, so that's just four not hits. What, that's not, four hits, yeah. three runs. That's not what we're used to seeing out of her. But you know, otherwise they, you know, it's a, it is literally a coin toss when you're talking about elite softball teams, man. You, you guys remember when Florida State won, how close they were to losing, when they won the whole thing, how close they were to losing, um, out out there a few times in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's just that's the way the sport works. Could Mac yeah. Leonard be the ace? No, no, they uh they have a freshman uh that McKenna Reed maybe. I might have just pulled that name completely out of my behind, and it's not right. But yeah, I McKenna she, Reed. Crushed there you it. go. Yeah, yeah, she pitched she... really well um, in a couple of the games down there. And then um, the the transfer from, I think she's from Arizona State with the last name Royalty. Allison. Yeah. No, no I think they're, they have like four pitchers, four pitchers they really use, uh, which is interesting. That's not usually how softball works, but that's how they're going to be this year, I guess. Yeah, some uh, house cleaning here. Beat number 15, Arizona 6-4. to four. Number 4, Arkansas 9-6. to six. Mm. Fell to number two, UCLA, 6-4. Number 22, Louisiana, they run-ruled 10-2, to and then they fell to Alabama 2-1. Uh, to one. So they'll be back in action Wednesday in Tallahassee at the Plex, 6 o'clock against North Florida. So go check them out because the baseball team's not going to be on campus for a minute, apparently. They're not coming back till March. Oh, no wow, yeah. yeah. Going to TC, going to TCU this weekend. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, shout-out, we, we glossed over a little bit, but Tanaya Latson, 31 points. And that went over Georgia Tech. I think that was her – and I don't think, I know. It was her seventh game this year of uh, at least 30 points. She is going to be the ACC Freshman of the Year, clearly. She should probably be the National Freshman of the Year, and she will probably be the ACC Player of the Year. So she just keeps on doing what she does. Just an awesome, awesome talent. Lock her down, Rising Spears. And a friend of the show, right? Yes, yeah. Hopefully Rising Spears locking her down, man. Yeah, yeah, you're going to need to see her for a couple more years, I think. Yeah, I'm sure Gino or Kim Mulkey – South Carolina, mm-hmm. Dawn Staley coming after her. Stay away. I would hope not. Stay away. If you're trying to grow your game, isn't it better for your game? Like, South Carolina needs more players. If I was Tim UConn, Mulkey though, needs more players. he's losing it, right? Like, Gino's, Gino's on the, the downslide, man, my guy. 
Is he? I thought they were like 23 and 2. I don't know. They got I guess for them, that is losing it. That's a crushing. Yeah. That's like Leonard season <laughs> for them. Uh, what do you think? It's like, man, let Florida State have this one. We don't need to go get all the all time greats. Let Flor- This will be great for Florida State. Says Imagine- the guy who covers a team that's just robbing every football team in the country and taking Nobody away all their Nobody cares prize about uh, <laughs> Albany football or shorter college football. <laughs> Come on, man. What about Florida those, State needs one of these, one of these Michigan players. Mush, Mustang fans, bro. Antonio yeah, but Brown. Florida State's bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like, Florida yeah. State women's basketball has accomplished some things, but they can't get over the hump. That hump is too big because they don't have that elite, elite talent that collects like it does at South Carolina, like it collected at Mul- with Mulkey at Baylor and now at LSU or obviously Geno. Let Tania Latson be here for a couple years. See who wants to come play with her. Let it collect. And let's see if we can have a new power on our hands. UConn twenty four and four, Corey. Oh, good see? grief! You're right. See? Gino is done. Man, four losses. Better lock down Brook. All right, that's a wrap on us. We made it like over forty five minutes. Look at that, Holy everybody. Yeah. No clue what we're going to talk about the rest of the week, but we'll we'll figure it all out. We'll lean on you, folks. We'll do a Renegade Express mm. mailbag. Not doing a live show, I don't think this week. Although, who knows? I don't know. Mike uh, Michael Langston might be in Hawaii still, and we might have to yeah. pick up the slack for another week, right. which is fine. We'll all hang out on YouTube. It's fun. Uh, we, we figure it all out. Uh, but in the meantime, stay connected to WarChant.com. Check out Corey's column on the baseball team's series clinching or series sweep, rather, of James yeah. Madison and Link Jarrett's first set here at the helm of Florida State. Gene Williams has got that full breakdown of the Florida State pass game in terms of the wide receivers and all the production they've made and possibly what they can have on the horizon. There's so much. It's all over at WarChant.com. Subscribe, everybody. What are you waiting for? Do it. For Corey, I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Champ presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Hit the thumbs up on the way out. Maybe five-star rating interview as well. Have a great one, everybody.